Hi everyone! Olá! Sejam bem-vindos! In this video, I will be walking you through the top six high-frequency verbs used in Portuguese. Mastering these verbs is very important to not only gain confidence in speaking, but also understanding the language. Learning Portuguese through high-frequency words is a great strategy, especially for students that don't have a lot of time to study. This way you will be comfortable speaking and listening to the most common Portuguese words. It's a great starting point. Thanks to everyone who already joined my book club. If you are interested in learning more about the first book we will be reading, I'll leave the link to last week's video in the description below. Book club starts March 1st and we have two options available, independent study and guided study. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell. E agora, vamos começar! As you're probably guessing, on the top of the list we have the verbs ser and estar. These verbs are definitely one of the first ones you should learn. For an English speaker, these verbs can be very tricky to understand, since both mean to be. While overall, sit is our permanent verb to be, and estar is our temporary to be, many times it's not that linear. I'll leave below links to two other videos I have about these verbs, but today I wanted to focus on situations where students, in my opinion, struggle the most. How would you say, in Portuguese, the glass is broken? Would you use ser or estar? From my experience, most students would say ser. However, the right answer is estar. One rule that is important to memorize is that we use estar when it's a consequence of something. So in this case, if the glass is broken, it means something happened in order for it to break. That's why we say o copo está partido. The same rule applies to these examples. A saia está rota. The skirt is torn because maybe someone fell. O João está cansado. João is tired because he's been working a lot. O carro está avariado. The car is broken, probably, because it needed oil. The other situation where I see students struggle is with food, for example. If you just tried a sip of milk and the milk is sour, how would you say it in Portuguese? Ser or estar? In this case, it would also be estar. The rule is if you need to try it in order to say something about it, you are going to use the verb estar. Think also of opposites. O leite está azedo. Não está bom. O café está amargo. Não está doce. Another common mistake is when students see the Portuguese word for always, sempre. They assume it's permanent. That is not the case. Many times we use the word sempre to emphasize the verb estar, showing the high frequency of a behavior or condition. O meu quarto está sempre desarrumado. Ela está sempre atrasada. Same thing with the opposite word, never, in Portuguese, nunca. Nunca can be used with the same examples to emphasize a very low frequency of something. Be aware that nunca, being a negative word, has to be used before the verb, as we do with não. O meu quarto nunca está Desarrumado. The last thing I wanted to point out about these verbs, and many times books do not mention this, 
is that in many situations you can use sehr and stad in a sentence, in the same sentence, while grammatically they are both correct, the meaning is different. It's important to understand the nuances of these verbs. A Joana é loura and a Joana está loura. Would you know the difference between both? A Joana é loura means that Joana is blonde, while the second example, a Joana está loura, means she is now blonde, meaning she recently changed her hair color. Let's look at a different example. A tua casa é bonita. And a tua casa está bonita. The first sentence means the house is pretty. You are giving your opinion about the house. A tua casa está bonita not only means the house is pretty, but it emphasizes that you did some type of change in it since the last time I saw it. And it looks pretty now. Eu sou feliz is something that defines me. I'm a happy person. But if I say eu estou feliz, I'm expressing that there is a reason to be happy right now in that moment. Verb number three is ter, to have. Just like in English, we use it a lot in Portuguese. Remember that there are many situations where in Portuguese we use the verb ter, where in English you would use the verb to be. To say your age, Eu tenho 20 anos. In many situations where in English you would use an adjective, in Portuguese you use an equivalent noun. Tenho fome. Ele tem muito êxito. Big false friend here. Don't think êxito is exit. Êxito is success in Portuguese. Tu tens razão. For measurements, we also use ter. Ana já tem um metro. The verb poder in English stands for can or may. It is an auxiliary verb, meaning it's followed by another verb. It is commonly used to refer to possibilities, opportunities, to ask and give authorization and to ask questions. Posso entrar? Não pude ir ao banco esta manhã. In slang, we use it as to stand. So expressions like I can't stand her. In Portuguese, we would say Não posso com ela. Our next verb is fazer to do or to make in English. I could make a whole video about the verb fazer since it has multiple uses. I'll focus on the ones that are more relevant and useful in my opinion. Faz-me um favor. O Rui faz a cama. In Portuguese, to ask questions, also use the verb fazer. Think that in Portuguese, we make a question, we don't ask questions. Posso fazer uma pergunta? We also use the verb fazer with the meaning of to take. Fazer uma pausa. To pack is fazer a mala. And to bake, fazer um bolo. We don't have a specific verb for these situations. Next verb is saber, our verb to know. It is commonly used as a generic to know, but also to express that you have knowledge or the know-how on how to do something. We don't use this verb when you know people and places. For that, we use conhecer. Sabes fazer pastéis de nata? Não, não sei. A Rita sabe falar várias línguas. This verb is also commonly used in many daily expressions that are super helpful to know and sound more like a native. 
Sabes uma coisa? Sabes que mais? Já se sabe que amanhã vou ter de trabalhar. Tanto quanto sabemos, a Ana está bem. Another great use of the verb saber is to hear or to learn about something. Soube que vais morar para Lisboa. Last but not the least, the verb saber is also used as to taste like. In this case, you use the verb saber a plus the noun of the item. Very confusing, right? So if you are tasting wine and you want to say it tastes like strawberry, you say o vinho sabe a morango. In this case, you tend to use the verb in the third person singular or plural only. As sobremesas sabem a café. When something is tasting good or tasting bad, what do you say in Portuguese? Sabe bem or sabe mal? In this case, we use saber followed by an adverb. Knowing all these meanings and uses of a verb is a long process, but it's good to be aware of the main uses and contexts so you can be prepared to understand the verbs in oral comprehension. I'm sure you have probably learned all these verbs. However, were you aware of the variety of uses each one had? Share with me below which ones were new and feel free to write a sentence to practice them. Obrigada pela vossa companhia e até à próxima!